Good afternoon. My name is Annie Williams and I'm an intern at Somerville Media Center. Today, we'll be, today I will be hosting another local business update where we offer business owners in the city of Somerville a chance to connect with the community and share the kinds of challenges that come with business interruption following state shutdown due to COVID-19. Today I'm excited to be joined by Jessica Eshleman, who is the Executive Director of Somerville Union Square Street Farmers Market, as well as Kate Stitchcomb, who is the Program Manager. How are both of you doing today and how are your families doing? Hi Annie, thanks so much for having us on today. Union Square Main Streets has been on uh, a variety of times, um, but it's wonderful to have a chance to come on and speak specifically about Union Square Farmers Market. So, First, just a, a note of thanks to you and, and the SMC team for making this possible. Um, thank you for asking about me and my family. You know, this is definitely a difficult time. However, I'd say Union Square Main Streets is really grateful to have meaningful work supporting the 192 businesses throughout the Union Square District. And I have to say that personally, I wake up and am grateful each day for the health of me and my family. So thanks for asking. I would also echo Jessica's thoughts and also just say that how grateful we are to continue supporting our community in the ways that we are and to be healthy and able to. Awesome. And how's your family doing, Kate? So far, so good. Um, and just every day we're, we're just, we take it as a blessing. Awesome. And um, how, how are your employees doing? How many people do you have employed at the, um, at the business? So Annie, our organization is, is a small organization. Kate and I are the only full-time staff members. We do have a couple of wonderful part-time team members, but a lot of Union Square Main Street's work, including the farmer's market, is volunteer driven. So for us, uh, when we think about our full team, volunteers are really um, critical team members for us. And they certainly are dealing with their own personal and professional challenges. However, what we're hearing from a lot of our volunteers are contributing to things like the Union Square Farmers Market is providing a really nice and meaningful outlet to contribute back to the community during this challenging time. And I guess I'd have to say if any of your viewers out there are um, thinking it might be nice to get involved and join our volunteer team, we would love to include folks, particularly at the Union Square Farmers Market. And um, anybody interested in volunteering could visit our webpage, unionsquaremain.org, and look for the Farmers Market tab at the top. Awesome. And what have you been doing to prepare for reopening? Because I know that you, you guys typically have a pretty busy summer. Yes, a very busy summer. Um, so on March 23rd, Governor Baker issued an order designating farmers markets as essential services. But even before that, we had been extensively researching best practices and collaborating with industry leaders such as the Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources, the National Farmers Market Coalition, and especially Mass Farmers Markets in order to create protocols that would align with the public health mandates pertaining to COVID-19. Um, so we were really, really grateful to hear from the city that they were interested in finding a way to create a COVID-19 prepared farmers market because really they, they truly understand how crucial access to local foods are. Um, and this became especially meaningful for us and our team after the announcement that the city canceled all public events through the rest of the year. So they actually established a working group with our team as well as the team from the Somerville Winter Farmers Market and Davis Square Farmers Market. And we've been working with them very, very closely since the end of April to put together this COVID-19 prepared market. Oh, that's awesome. So, I mean, do you guys collaborate them regularly too, or have you just um, kind of like ha put your heads together to see how you can make this experience um, better considering, um, you know, the fact that we're in a pandemic and all of that? Often, Annie, Union Square Main Streets collaborates across the board with all of our programs. It's part of what I call the Main Street uh, magic behind the Main Street model is about working in partnership with others that are in the district. So we do have a history of working with many of these groups. However, this is a, a special sort of working group and that we were meeting multiple times per week and really addressing a, a variety of challenges that presented themselves along the way to planning a COVID prepared farmer's market. Are you guys going to um, have to reduce the amount of vendors that you have at the market? 
Absolutely. In order to maintain social distancing um, and also ensure that we can um, be aware of how many customers are in the selling area at one time, we had to significantly reduce the number of our vendors. We went from about 50 to about 25 vendors. So that's a really significant drop. And those decisions um, in some part were made for us in terms of what type of vendors were permissible from the city's perspective. Uh, for example, it was, man it was prioritized that only food-based businesses could be with us this year. So as much as we love our specialty vendors, you'll see that this year those folks aren't with us. Uh, neither are our prepared food vendors or ready-to-eat food vendors. Um, and then additionally, we had to work with vendors who were able to work with a social distancing setup. And so that further required us to make some difficult choices about which vendors are with us. Now that said, as data proves it's safe and the city gives us a green light, we do look forward to growing back to what we consider to be the normal market and what folks are used to experience when they come to the farmer's market. But we just don't know when that will be. Right, yeah, everything is kind of up in the air right now, but it seems like you guys are doing a lot of hard work to make sure that you're as much prepared for um, and making the best out of the season given all the restrictions that you have. Thank you for saying that. Kate uh, Stinchcomb is our program manager and the Union Square Farmers Market market manager. And I can say at, with certainty that Kate's been going above and beyond to ensure that these protocols are put into place in a way that builds confidence among the public among our partners in the city, among our vendors, our sponsors, and all of those who participate. And, and this is a question that um, like both of you can answer, or one of you, um, what were some of the biggest um, concerns that you had uh, when the pandemic hit and you were thinking about the summer um, and uh, thinking about the charity that you do? Um, what were some of the things that was most concerning to you about going back to work? Well, you know, for me, as the executive director of Union Square Main Streets, I thought uh, two things. First, will the city enable us to hold this valuable resource for the community? And how do we go about instilling confidence and ensuring that our plans are scrutinized to the degree that they need to be to keep everybody safe? And then second, I immediately thought, we've been doing a snap match at our farmer's market since 2005, where we match dollars for people who receive SNAP benefits, which is the modern day food stamps, and how do we ensure that we have funding in order to meet increased needs. I'm gonna let Kate talk a little bit about some of the other precautions that we've taken in terms of keeping um, our vendors safe, because essentially the Union Square Farmers Market is a collection of about 25 small businesses, each with their own staff, and for us, presenting the market as a whole, it was, of course, critical that we put into place protocols to keep everybody, shoppers as well as vendors, as safe as possible. Yeah, I'd actually love this opportunity, Annie, to kind of talk about um, the customer shopping experience and, and what it will look like this summer. Um, so the farmer's market this year is indeed quite different than it ever has looked like in the past. Um, one of the reasons that folks have really loved coming to the market is for this concept of it being the community's living room and being able to meet your neighbors and learn more about the farmers and get cooking tips and spend general time together. But this year, because of COVID-19, we've had to shift from friendly gathering to what we're now calling friendly safety. So to see the full list of all of these changes, customers can go to our website at unionsquaremain.org and look under the farmer's market tab. But I'll highlight some of the biggest ones that folks will notice immediately. Um, the first being that we've had to actually put up a specific perimeter around the market selling area and we now have one entrance and one exit point. Um, we're also, as Jessica mentioned, having to limit the number of customers that we can have in the market selling area at one, at one time to, in order to maintain social distancing. So there is a line to get into the market. So we're asking for folks' patience as they wait in that line. Um, but we're also asking neighbors to do everything that they can to plan in advance and advance and make their shopping trips as efficient as possible. So there are a couple of different ways that folks can do this. So our vendors now offer a pre-order option so you can order everything that you'd like from them in advance. Um, and you can see all of that information on our website as well. We're also encouraging folks to sign up for a specific time slot to do their shopping. 
Um, but our biggest request um, is because we're only allowed to have so many people in the market at one time, that folks send one shopper or what we're calling the market champion per household. <laughs> um, and then there are a couple of things I just want to make sure are clear about that. So the pre-ordering and the signing up for a shopping slot are really, really encouraged. However, they are not mandatory because we do know that some of our neighbors do not have access to internet or the ability to take advantage of some of these options. So walk-ups are also accommodated. When folks come to the market, they'll see two lines. One of them will be specifically for the shopping slots and the pre-orders, but the other one will be for the walk-ups. Our colleague at the city says, um, reserve online or wait in line, <laughs> which we love because the shopping slot and pre-order line is expedited as a way to reward those shoppers who have planned for in advance. Um, but we do make sure to leave enough room and space in the market so that we can also get our walk-ups in as well. And we've heard from folks that actually the line is not as long as they anticipated it being. And just in general, I think we're so grateful that our neighbors have been really supportive of this new market experience because it's I mean, it's quite, it's quite different. Um, and the way that we've asked for folks to express their support of this is by taking our farmer's market shopping pledge to ensure a safe environment um, for all. And we've received great feedback from our customers actually that coming to this market has been one of the first like in-person commerce transactions that they've made since the stay at home advisories went into place in March, just because they appreciate all the safety measures that we've implemented. But we've definitely had some growing pains. Um, and so we're asking for everyone's patience with us. And as Jessica mentioned, there are a number of precautions in the market selling area that you'll see either myself or another one of our staff members walking around and reminding people of, which more specifically is that we have social distancing markers for folks to stand on while they're waiting in line and ordering at the vendor booths. And we realize that, that having six feet in between yourself and the farmer is not what folks are used to. So very often I'll walk through and say, just a reminder, stay on the line, stay on the line. Yeah. And you'll also see that some of our vendors have actually put up a plastic screen in between themselves and the customers. Um, and we're also encouraging touchless payment as much as possible. But we also do, of course, accept cash and our SNAP tokens for our SNAP customers. So for those methods of payment, there'll be a vessel on the vendor booth table that you'll put them within there. Um, but just once again, we're really asking for shoppers to plan ahead and to make their purchases as efficiently as possible when they visit with us. I, I love that community living room. I think that that's that that really uh, stuck out to me a lot, especially you know in in times like this where it seems like we're all so distant. It's just like another emphasis of a way for us to come together, especially during uh, challenges like this. Um, I'm not you sure, know, Andy, you... if I could just offer a comment because yeah. we take great pride in the community living room feel that we're often able to cultivate and present uh, throughout the season. And we did have a shopper who commented um, quite candidly that it felt to them as though it had gone from the community's living room to a bit like the airport because there's lines and the traffic is moving in one direction. And I had to, to respond to this member of the community quite honestly and say, you're right. Um, and we're really honored to be able to present a market at all this year. And so when the community comes prepared and knowing what to expect, that's actually, I think, the, the biggest component that we've found is that if you've come to the market and not seen a program like this or not had a chance to review the website or receive the newsletter, it feels so different. And there is a learning curve to know which line to stand in, which direction to be walking in, to have folks like Kate and me come up and remind you friendly to please social distance. But when you come back the next week, you know what's happening. And we've gotten that feedback as well. I didn't know what was happening the first week. I came back, it's a little bit like riding a bike. I know exactly what to do. So the feedback has been positive, but it's important for us to share with viewers that it is um, shifted away from that community living room temporarily into um, unfortunately what might feel like being crossed at the airport to get in and to get out. But as a member of the public was reflecting with me about the Somerville Winter Farmers Market, there's both a, a sense of melancholy about that, there's sadness, but there's a sense of solidarity with it. 
and that we're all doing our part to make these open air commerce opportunities available for all. And so if I could just take this opportunity to, to request that viewers watching, um, as counterintuitive as it is, and let's just be plain spoken about it as not fun as it is, we do ask that you please elect one representative from your household and send them down to shopping. It helps us um, serve more customers. It helps the vendors make more sales because we can process people more quickly. It helps slow the possible transmission of this virus. And it's better for the shoppers and for us because it doesn't, it means we don't have to come up and ask, could you please social distance and remind folks that uh, we do need to keep six feet apart from one another. Absolutely. And I just want to say that I really um, commend you on your ability to hear your customers and like understand their concerns, even if like they're, you know, not taking into consideration um, the public health climate situation that we're in. But I think it's awesome that you um, are, you know, redirecting them. And, you know, you're right. Once they get to that place, they can come back and they can understand how the process works. And then it gives them a little bit of a sense of familiarity that they didn't have prior to that. So I think that that's really awesome. Um, I'm not sure that if either of you touched on this, but I wanted to ask if there was a community group or a local government agency um, or un like, I know you talked about the Somerville uh, Winter Farmers Market, um, but was there a community group or a local government agency that you want to highlight for your guide for any guidance or help that they offered you in figuring out how to reopen for the summer? Yeah, I do. I would love to jump in here because we really just cannot thank enough the city for their guidance and for their support and the collaborative nature of the team that we've been working with both at the city and like we had spoken about the farmers markets before. Um, we've also received a number of um, really, really helpful tidbits in terms of working with like the Food Security Coalition as well as Shape Up Somerville and just so many people who have been working and doing incredible, incredible, meaningful work in the terms of food access and helping us get the word out to our most vulnerable populations has been really, really important. And we're just, we're very, very grateful for that. And I would, I would add to that, there's a, a few other groups that should be acknowledged as well. The first is uh, Boynton Yards, which uh, is a project by DLJ and Leggett McCall happening in Boynton Yards. They're our season sponsor this year for the farmer's market. And that's helping us remain viable, seeing that we've gone from 50 vendors down to 25. Importantly, a special shout out to all the amazing businesses around the plaza who we've been working with to create a cohesive experience in the heart of our square. We typically present the farmer's market in a very different configuration, and we understand that the way that the market has been presented this season is a lot different, and um, groups like Somerville Media Center and The Independent and Kasabi and more have been meeting with us, um, exchanging emails to make sure that we can um, take over this space in a new way, but in a way that still serves the customers of those businesses. And then lastly, I'd like to give a shout out to the Union Square Main Street's Promotion Committee, which is made up of business leaders from throughout Union Square who are bringing back a campaign called Shop the Square Saturdays. And so last year, the Promotions Committee started this campaign as an effort to create stronger connections between farmer market shoppers and our brick and mortar businesses. And so this year we're retooling the campaign just a bit, but those who come to the farmer's market will see a lot of promotion related to the businesses, the brick and mortar businesses I'm referring to throughout Union Square, really as a reminder of the connectivity between economic uh, activity in Union Square. That's awesome. I love it. Um, so I really, um, I can't, I can't, wait to to talk about this good food for all i was like so excited when um i heard about this program that you guys have i thought it was um so innovative and so gracious uh, tell me more about that and tell me how long you've been running that program yeah so good food for all um actually stems out of the union square main streets which has been uh, privately fundraising for our snap match so the SNAP is a Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program for folks who might not be familiar with it. 
and it helps our neighbors ensure access to local foods at the market. Um, so as I mentioned, since Union Square Main Street has been privately fundraising for that since 2005, um, this is actually the third year that we have done that fundraising through a campaign specifically called Good Food for All. So for the last two years, more than 50 businesses have helped us raise funds for this campaign to help feed our neighbors. But because of the severe impacts of COVID-19 on our local businesses right now, asking donations from them does not feel appropriate. So we are instead turning the campaign back to our community and asking our neighbors for their help. And you know, Annie, this is another committee that's made up of uh, leaders throughout Union Square. And one of those leaders, Maria Rondu, is a co-founder of Celeste. Maria was hoping to join us for this afternoon's conversation with you. However, she is working with her partners to get the restaurant open with some new outdoor dining space. So she's unfortunately not able to be here. But I'd like to read a comment that she shared at a committee meeting that we had recently held because both Kate and I are really motivated by it. And at, at the end of the day, I think it just really tells the story given this particular climate. So I am going to read it. Um, and again, this is Maria Rondu from Celeste, the Peruvian restaurant on Bow Street. And she says, now more than ever, we need your support for the people who are at the biggest disadvantage the people who are most marginalized, the people who haven't been able to afford not to go to work, the people who have been dealing with the critical emergencies that are happening, and the people who are keeping food on our table. So now we're turning to the neighbors of Somerville and asking if you will make a donation to Union Square Main Street's Good Food for All campaign in order to help us sustain our SNAP match this means a shopper that has an EBT card or a pandemic EBT card. Importantly, I want to highlight that we're honoring the match for that as well. They can bring their cards to the market each Saturday through November 21st. We'll swipe it and we'll give a match dollar for dollar. And then those tokens can be used to buy nutrient dense, healthy food, which is so important during the time, always, but during the time of a pandemic when strong immune systems are really necessary and critical. So we're really asking that folks join us in this moment. There's a great need. We know what the unemployment numbers look like. We understand that there are people's and live stories behind each one of them. And so viewers of this program, while well, the campaign typically happens, or I'm sorry, as always, the, the campaign happens the last week in June. There's no need to wait if you want to make a contribution. 100% of all contributions will be directed to the SNAP match directly, meaning we do not take any admin um, off uh, a percentage of admin. It all goes directly to the match. And to make that donation, you could go to Union Square Main org and look for good food for all across the top and soon it will have a donation button on our homepage as well. Awesome. Lastly, if I could, I'll actually just give a shout out to our sponsors for Good Food for All campaign, which for the second year is the development team at 346 Somerville Ave and for the first time this year is Summer Nova. I was um, particularly just, you know, really um, impressed with this whole program. Um, and I just wanted to know, um, I know that, you know, people in, you know, living situations where they don't have access to nutrition food, they also um, don't have access to other commodities as well, like transportation. And I was just wondering how you reach the individuals that don't have the ability or the transportation to be able to get to the market themselves. Annie, I'm so glad that you're asking this question because it gives us the opportunity to really um, thank some community partners who are very important for this work. Uh, our market does not have a specific delivery service, but we are very, very grateful for groups like the Mamas, I'm sure you've heard about, the Mutual Aid of Medford and Somerville, as well as Cambridge Bicycle Safety. And these groups help coordinate volunteers who can pick up goods from the market and deliver them to our vulnerable populations. And I have talked to a number of customers um, who could not be more grateful for the work that these people are doing because as you're saying, it ensures that they have access to this, this very local nutrient dense food. 
Awesome. That's wonderful. So I, I know that, you know, throughout our discussion, you have um, reiterated ways that the community can um, support you. But, you know, I'd love for you to, you know, talk about it in, in length since we're reaching the end of this and, you know, add, hopefully, if you can, add any other ways that you're looking for um, support in your community during this time. Thank you, Annie, for that. That's really fantastic. Well, the first I'd say is stay connected with us. Um, so get to unionsquaremaine.org and subscribe to our newsletters. We do do two. Um, there's a twice monthly newsletter that reports on all things Union Square that gets delivered to readers' inboxes on Saturday mornings. But during the farmer's market, we also do a weekly farmer's market e-news that comes out early in the week. And if folks subscribe to that, they will get the latest Union Square news right in their inbox and have the greatest opportunity to sign up for one of those shopping slots that open up when that newsletter is distributed. Um, if you're coming to the farmer's market, please read the customer pledge, take it and uh, abide by it. Come to the farmer's market and shop. Consider coming to the farmer's market and volunteering. We have such a community. It's a village that makes this possible and it's a really wonderful group of people. And we're always looking to grow our village. Of course, donating to Good Food For All to make that snap match is really um, important and critical always. But again, as Maria said, now more than ever. And then finally, I'd say folks um, who are coming to the market or not coming to the market to remember to patronize our local businesses. There are 192 Union Square businesses right now that have been weathering the storm of COVID since March. And our support is going to make the difference of staying open or possibly shuttering. So all of us in the community have an opportunity to be their customers, to be purchasing their uh, merchandise, gift cards as gifts for yourself, for other people. There's lots of great ideas on how to support local on unionsquaremain.org. So I invite folks to check us out online and of course, get on our social media channels. They're lots of fun to follow and we're on Twitter, social, uh, Twitter, um, Instagram, and Facebook. Awesome, exciting. And you guys are open right now or? Um... The Farmer's Market is every Saturday from um, this Saturday through November 21st from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, I had such a wonderful time talking to you ladies and I fully support you. I think you guys are doing a wonderful job and um, I can't wait to see what the turnout is going to be like for the season. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, SMC. Thank, Thank you. So much. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. You too.